there, my friends, and welcome back to Retro Central. My name is Peter, and this is, after a long period of waiting, a new pickups video. I haven't done one of these for a little while, um, for various reasons, from lack of money to lack of time, to weather just wreaking havoc on my game hunting trips, thanks to snow and ice and cold, but I finally have enough material here to be able to share a new pickups video with you. Um, let's go ahead and just get started here rather than me giving you a bunch of background. Let's talk NES first, because after all, I'm wearing the shirt, so I might as well start with that. From Game Depot in Holyoke, Massachusetts, thanks to Dave, the owner there, for hooking me up with good deals, as he always does. We have Gunsmoke, or Gun.Smoke from Capcom, a conversion of the coin-op, which you can play the original coin-op on the Capcom, uh, Capcom Classics Collection disc. Say that three times fast. Uh, but this version is also a lot of fun to play. Great music, decent graphics, very, very tough challenge, at least tougher than I expected it to be. Um, and a pretty interesting play control scheme if you haven't played this before. Uh, the A and B buttons fire diagonally, uh, and then you have to press both at the same time to uh, fire vertically. Uh, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's still a lot of fun to play. I love that Old West theme. I always have games like this or Sunset Riders, that, that style, uh, just... For whatever reason, it just appeals to me. So uh, this game, a lot of fun. Didn't have it in my library because it was a little bit on the pricey side a lot of places that I saw it, but now I do. So thanks, Dave, for that. He also helped me get set up with Spy Hunter for the NES, published by Sunsoft. This is a great conversion of the arcade game, and I am not good at the arcade game. So that right there, if they're making it more fun to play on the NES, at least for my money, then that's awesome. Uh, game runs smoother, runs at 60 frames a second instead of 30 like the arcade game does. Uh, no high and low gear buttons or gear shifter. You can do that by just pressing up and down on the D-pad. Uh, it seems to handle a little bit better, at least in my opinion it does, and the uh, difficulty seems to be more level. The only thing is I'm not very good at the game yet. I usually lose my car in reserve at about 11 or 12,000 points and I have to start over again. Nonetheless, I have a lot of fun with this game and I'm glad to own it. And the last of the regular NES games that I picked up was from Game Hunter in Springfield, Mass. at the X. This is Bo Jackson Baseball, published by Data East and developed by Beam Software. Uh, this I got, uh, along with a couple of other games, as part of my Retro Referee project, which I'll be working on later this spring and over the summer, when I'll be taking a look back at retro, or, uh, retro sports games uh, for the NES, SNES, PlayStation, and so on. Um... This particular game, what stands out to me is the clarity of the voice samples in this game. If you hear the umpire call strikes, or if you listen to an argument between the manager and the umpire uh, close play at first or second base, uh, it's really, really clear. Really, really loud, but really, really clear and definitely noticeable. Uh, the gameplay, for whatever reason, tends to remind me of hardball a little bit in terms of four pitch selections and choosing up, down, left, or right on the D-pad. Also, power, bunting... Uh, contact hitting and normal hitting uh, also done with the d-pad as well whether you're offense or defense um, so thanks for hooking me up uh, game hunter on this I, I really appreciate that let's talk super nintendo first up is kyle petty's no fear racing which i picked up at retro games plus down in newington connecticut a bunch of awesome people down there thank you very much for getting me set up with this the reason i got this is because of that little logo right there that is the williams entertainment logo uh, Williams would later be called Midway, uh, which you'll find out in a documentary which is coming out down the line called Insert Coin from one of my close friends on the internet. I'll let you know more about that as that uh, project comes closer to completion. But um, seeing that, mid that Williams logo automatically made me think probably an arcade game, so I might as well try it. I don't think it's quite an arcade game, although it has arcade stylings and sensibilities to it. The menu certainly remind me a lot of Danny Sullivan's Indie Heat which was a uh, Trade West slash Leland game. Uh, and the game takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of the controls. Pretty touchy. Uh, nevertheless, it's still a pretty interesting pickup, and I'm glad that I have it, uh, especially for that little Williams logo. I love that to death. Uh, also, we have a couple of other sports games for the Retro Referee Project. We have NCAA Basketball, which was released in 1992, and then a complete in-box NHL Stanley Cup, which was released in 93. These games are not 
exactly identical, but they are cut from the same cloth. A lot of Mode 7 usage for scaling and rotation. Not a lot of uh, player detail or graphic detail in these games. The rotation tends to work a little bit better for NCAA basketball. It tends to be a little too chaotic in NHL Stanley Cup, but still cool to have both of these, and I'm really super psyched that I have this complete in box. And I got uh, both of these from Game Depot and Holyoke. So thanks again to Dave for those. The last SNES game that I want to share with you is one that I am super excited to have in my collection again. This is Illusion of Gaia, a game that instantly calls to mind my time of living just outside of Worcester, Massachusetts. Kind of a difficult time in my life is when I got this, uh, word was going around that we were all going to be laid off because our call center was closing, and that did happen. Uh, so the way that I wound up playing this game was I played some of it at home because I had to move back in with my grandmother when I lost my job and I was out of money. And then I would go to see my then-girlfriend, Lisa, out in uh, just outside of Worcester on the weekend. So I'd bring this game with me. She would pick up where I left off. She would get a little bit further in the game. You know, I would watch. And then I would take it back home, and I would pick up where she left off. And we kind of went back and forth until she beat the game. I had fallen asleep, so I didn't see the ending. So hopefully I'll get to see the ending to this game myself. Uh, Illusion of Gaia, I paid $20 for this at Game Hunter, which was $10, and I had seen it elsewhere. Uh, so thank you very much, Game Hunter, for setting me up on that. I appreciate it. Let's talk disc-based games. Um, and before I do the special surprise, I want to show you a couple of Sega CD games, if I may. This is Wheel of Fortune, which is a Sony ImageSoft game. Uh, this was $10 at Video Game Castle in Chicopee, Massachusetts. My buddy Ralph, thank you very much for helping me get set up with that. Uh, this is as complete in box as you can possibly get. It has the foam on the inside, it has the disc, it has a Wheel of Fortune poster on the inside as well as the instruction manual. Um, I'm a little disappointed in this version. There is a lot of unnecessary disc access and cutaways to Vanna to demand clapping for something silly, but it still plays a pretty competent game of Wheel, and F Wheel of Fortune if you enjoy that kind of thing, uh, and I personally do, so I'm glad that I picked it up. The other thing I got, um, and this is a guilty pleasure of mine, I want to thank uh, my friend Danny, who is also known as half bit he does a series or has been doing a series on youtube called retrospective perspective uh, danny is one of the driving forces behind me getting in front of a camera at all um, he's the guy that uh, convinced me that i should just do it uh, and one of the videos that he has done uh, talked about this game uh, which is called kids on site for the sega cd this is a game for kids obviously got the sega club logo at the top um it is not a great game per se. It's more of like a sandbox with construction equipment. Um, but some of the things that happen in the game are just so off the wall, stupid, hilarious uh, that I love every minute of it. I actually posted some video of me playing it on Instagram a few days ago. And I'm super glad to have this in my library. Uh, if it wasn't for Danny's work turning me on to this, I never would have known about it and probably passed over it. Uh, but I promised myself if I found a copy in the wild, I would get it. So I did. So, uh, again, Danny, thank you uh, very much for talking me into getting behind the camera or in front of the camera because uh, now I just can't get enough. Kids on site. It's Danny's fault. All right. I do have some PlayStation games that I want to share, but I did promise that I have some sealed games. We're going to save the PlayStation 2 game for uh, later. This first one here is Blaster Master uh, Blasting Again, which I actually first heard about uh, through GameSack, who unfortunately is on hiatus. Uh, hope you guys come back soon, Joe and Dave. We miss you already. Um, they didn't review it favorably, but I've never played it, so I'm willing to give it a shot. This is from 2001, it looks like. So let's go ahead and rip the seal, shall we? Uh, if we can. Uh, this does not seem to have one of those pull... Oh, there it is. There's a pull tab. Nope, that's not one. Uh, this is the part where you have to wait for me. Well, I get the, there we go. So let's open it up. Crinkle the paper or the, the cellophane for effect. This does have the, uh, the top tab on it, so I got to remove that. I'm going to try and keep that on there if I can. If it doesn't come off, eh, it did. Came off of my hands. Darn it. 
Now, didn't mean for that to happen, but it did. So we'll fold that down. We'll open up the case, and on the inside of the case, we do have the Blaster Master Manual, uh, which is on the inside. And, and we also have the blue Blaster Master disc, which is right there. Uh, inside of the manual, we have we have no um, we have no warranty card, which is kind of interesting. But we do have a full color manual, uh, which is uh, again on the inside of the disc, and the manual is about twenty nine pages or so. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of experience with this. I just opening it for the first time, so I have no uh, personal impressions i hope to give you some soon and with this um i'll read the back of the cd case as i usually do remember blaster master due to popular demand the immortal legend is blasting back resurrected as a 3d action to bonanza on the playstation game console and guess what it's better than ever according to crave entertainment our old champion Jason, weary of his battles, has passed away, and his heroic crown has fallen to Roddy, his only son and heir. It is Roddy, with the help of his sister Elfie, that is destined to seek out and destroy the treacherous half-flesh, half-machine mutations that are steadily multiplying beneath the Earth. Having depleted the space they have occupied since their supposed demise, they are now burrowing their way to the very core of the Earth and are ultimately threatening the stability of the entire planet. Wow, that's kind of deep. Roddy must trek through the Earth's crust and find a way to stop this terrible infestation. Like woodworms, they will leave the Earth rotten, a dusky husk that will collapse in on itself. Boy, that sounds like a game I want to play. Roddy will reveal the secret of Eve, his alien mother. What? And will also uncover the idiosyncrasies of Sophia and will fight and win. But then again, that's up to you. The Blaster Master is back. Well, I hope this is good. Uh, I don't know much about it. Uh, Joe and Dave, I don't think, like this very much, but uh, we'll see if I do. So that's one. This other one, I want to thank Clint from... Uh, he is the master of Lazy Game Reviews. He uh, does a fantastic series of videos, mainly about PC games, but also covers some console games as well. Um, he's part of our family over at RetroWare. And he did a Let's Play of this, which is uh, Barbie Super Sports. Uh, and I remember watching this video and laughing my ass off because of a certain sequence in the game uh, uh, surrounding the water fountain uh, where you can actually get a virtual drink of water. And it's just this one offshoot of water. It's the stupidest thing, but his genuine laughter, it's hard not to laugh along with Clint in that particular section of the game. Uh, so I saw this sealed and I'm like, well, damn, I have to have it. So... Here it is. So let's go ahead and open this up. Um, trying not to take forever here. Oh, there was a uh, there was a pull tab that I didn't use. All right, Barbie Super Sports. This also does have the Barbie Super Sports tab, a little ID tab at the top that we'll try and take off. Uh, hopefully this will be better than the last one, or at least easier than the last one. There we go. Yes, it is. Barbie Super Sports. Get ready for cool snowboarding and inline skating action with Barbie. Two-player fun, play alone or with a friend. Race and play through 10 challenging levels. Wow. Choose tons of cool outfits for Barbie to wear. <laughs> okay. Control all the action as you help Barbie do amazing flips and tricks. Find the keys to unlock the ultimate level. Plus, discover secret areas. Two sports in one game. Mattel Media. Barbie software for girls. On the inside of the game case, we have a pink and clear CD. We also have the game manual. And the game manual is black and white. It is just 16 pages in length. It talks us through the racing, skating, and snowboarding levels, as well as some hints and tips. 
including once you've collected the pink tickets, they become gold tickets, which you can collect to add points to your high score. Okay. So, yeah, this is Barbie Super Sports, uh, which is now open, now obviously mine. And uh, we'll see if I have as much fun with this as Clint did with his playthrough. Again, if you haven't checked out uh, Lazy Game Reviews, the YouTube channel, you really should. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, Clint's channel up here. Okay. That said, let's go ahead and rip through some other uh, PlayStation games just really quickly. Um, this is Crash Team Racing, which is loose. I only paid $6.50 for this at Retro Games Plus uh, in Newington, Connecticut. Again, if you haven't checked them out, please do if you're in the area. Destruction Derby Raw, which I picked up from Video Game Castle in Chicopee. Uh, this completes the Destruction Derby trilogy for the PlayStation. Um, not quite as good as Destruction Derby. Uh, about on par with Destruction Derby 2, although a bit less of a focus on vehicle damage in this game, which is a little disappointing. Uh, so Destruction Derby Raw. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, which I got from Retro Games Plus. Uh, this is a Midway game, uh, as was Destruction Derby Raw. Midway published this one. Um... I suck at Mortal Kombat. I think I've talked about that on video before. But when I think Mortal Kombat, I think arcades. I think about all the time that I spent watching other people play and seeing how good they were. Um, and maybe if I play this enough, maybe I can maybe get good. Although usually I get to the third fight and die. So we'll see. Jeopardy, which I got from Retro Games Plus as well. Uh, you already saw Wheel of Fortune earlier, so you know I'm a game show junkie. So that's that. Thank you to Jay from the Game Chasers for reminding me of Area 51 for the PlayStation. He did a Top 5 Friday video talking about his top 5 favorite uh, light gun shooter games, and this was his number one. Uh, and I'm like, well, damn, I don't have this game. And what do you know? It's another Midway game. So I played this a little bit, and I did okay. I still have some work to do. Uh, this doesn't use a light gun, however. This, you either have to use your controller or a mouse. So that makes it a little more complicated, a little more challenging. But I'm glad to have this. This is going right next to Maximum Force in my collection. Motor Tune Grand Prix, which I picked up from Gameplay USA in Westfield, Massachusetts. Uh, this, if you've ever played Gran Turismo, you know Polyphony Digital? Yeah, you've probably heard of them. Well, this is actually where they got their start for the PlayStation designing these games. Uh, very much a kart racer, uh, very toony, as you can see in the title. Um, not quite as fully functioned as a Crash Team Racing or a Mario Kart, but still fun to play nonetheless. And this is from, uh, this is from 1996? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So Motor Tune Grand Prix. Uh, going back to Game Depot, I picked up Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider 2. I never had these before. I've never played them. So hopefully I'll get around to trying those. Nobody's going to care about these but me, but I'm going to show them off anyway. This is Madden 2003 and Madden 2004. And the reason that these are significant is now I own all of the Madden games for the PlayStation. 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. Um, picked up 2004 at Gameplay USA in Westfield and 2003 at Game Hunter. So awesome. Thank you for that. Game Hunter also set me up with N-Gen Racing, a game that I have been seeking out for quite a long time, and I finally have. Think Ace Combat, but rather than shooting, it's racing. I guess that's the best way to put it. Also, a really good soundtrack in here. And last but not least on the PlayStation list, Star Ocean The Second Story. This was game number 400 in my PlayStation library. Um, this game... I admit I bought in 1999, and I never played it. And then I sold it because I wasn't playing it. I meant to get around to it, and life was just happening, and I just didn't touch it. But I always remembered about this game was the introduction, the, the opening CGI in the music. And to this day, when I pop disc one into my PlayStation to test it, just send chills up and down my spine. It's that good. Uh, and I'm hoping to give this more time and a better run-through. And for sure, I'm not selling this one. Uh, this one is staying in my collection. So, Star Ocean, the second story. Now my PlayStation 2 library is at 403 games. Uh, 
so combine that with my PlayStation 2 library, which is about 780, and wow, that's that's a lot of games, probably more than I'll ever get to play in my lifetime. What else do I have to show? Ah, yes. A um, couple of Wii games really quickly. Uh, this is Big Buck Hunter Pro. Uh, I'm a big fan of Raw Thrills arcade games, and this is another one, this along with Target Terror. I love my light gun games for the Wii, and this is fun, even though I don't really feel good about shooting wildlife. Uh, also, uh, because a lot of people talked about it and said it was good, I picked up the Godfather Black Hand Edition. I just waggle around like an idiot and wind up punching people. I'm probably not doing it right, but it's still fun. And Trauma Team. This was the one trauma game of the three for the Wii that I did not have, and I'm glad to have it in my collection now. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't spent a lot of time with it yet. I do know that it's more than just surgery in this game, but I don't have a lot to share yet on my experience with that. Last but not least, I want to thank uh, Retro Games Plus again for carrying re uh, Nintendo Power back issues. Um, these Nintendo Power back issues I purchased from, uh, from Retro Games Plus, and I started a nice little set. Uh, they are not cheap. They usually go between $3 to $15 a piece, uh, especially... Um, <clears throat> The older ones from the NES era tend to be the $10 to $15 ones, whereas the ones for from the uh, late Super Nintendo and early Nintendo 64 era can be had pretty cheaply. Uh, but these I used for my consolation video this week, which uh, should be up by the time you see this. Um, and these are a lot of fun to read time and time again. So uh, thanks to them for carrying these. Uh, and I'm glad I have an opportunity to get these. I hope to get more. I'd love to be able to have these and just read them at will. Uh, and even do uh, weekly videos where I could read letters from Nintendo Power. I think that would be pretty great. And last but not least, because I have one more sealed game to share with you. This is Flow Urban Dance Uprising, uh, which I never played. And there's a price tag of $10 on here. Uh, that's not what I paid. I paid a cent. One penny from FYE in the Holyoke Mall in Holyoke, Massachusetts for this. So let's go ahead and open this real quick because I know I've been on video for a long time. All right. So we've got this open. Dance to a new beat. Put your body in motion in the first and only hip-hop dance game. Motivate, elevate, innovate, and educate. On the inside of the game case, we have the Flow DVD-ROM. We also have a manual in here. Uh, the manual talks a lot on the back about King Kong. And I could even buy a game from Ubisoft and get two-day free, two free shipping if I decided to do that. Uh, I know nothing about this game. I only knew that it was open, uh, that it was, uh, it was still factory sealed. Um, it is hip hop, uh, which I'm not really all that familiar with, uh, but it does have Nucleus's jam on it, uh, which automatically makes this worth the money. <laughs> uh, that, I love that. That track is great. Don't sweat the technique, which I remember hearing in aggressive inline. Uh, what else is here? I'm sure there's some other stuff in here that I'd probably be familiar with, but I'll have to check this out later on. So, Flow Urban Dance Uprising. So, that is it. This is why I don't do pickup videos very often, because when I do do them, they tend to be epics. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching me open some sealed games. I love doing that. Anytime I get the opportunity to get some sealed games and open them on camera, I treasure and enjoy that immensely. Thanks for watching. We'll do another one of these pickup videos when the time is right. Until then, thanks for watching and take care, everybody.